Hello everyone, today I'm going to be showing you guys how to parse strings using a switch statement in C++. So if you're clicking on this video, you probably already know that you cannot use strings directly in a switch statement in C++. Uh, typically, you would use an enum, an enumeration, uh, to, to accomplish that. However, in this video, I am going to demonstrate it using a map. Uh, it will just be something different. But uh, it's always sometimes cool to see new ways to, to approach a specific problem. I'm going to hopefully try to make this video um, approachable for beginners. So if you're new to C++, I'll try to explain everything that I'm doing and sort of break down it, break down everything as I go. So to begin, uh, this application that we're just going to quickly run is going to display a menu to the user. The user will enter a command and uh, we will check then if that command is found and if so uh, we will do some processing and all that will be in a loop and then when uh, when the user enters uh, end it will then end the program so the first thing you're going to want to do is include string include map for the map and then include io string because we will be writing to the console. Now, the first thing that you're going to want to do is initialize your map. And to do that, uh, let's first talk about a little bit about what a map is. Now, a map has a key and then a value. So it's a key value pair. Now, this key is going to be what the user enters. So the command which is entered so then that key correlates to a value in the map. Now keys are unique in the map, so you can only have one key. You can't have uh, end twice, for example. You only can have it once, otherwise it won't compile. Um, however, the values can be the same, so you can have end and start both pointing to the same value um, because they have different keys. So to do that in C++, it, I'll use the <coughs> namespace here, and you'll do map, and then first you're going to type in your key. So that key is going to be a string, which correlates then to the value, which is an int, and we can call this anything, but uh, just for simplicity, we'll call it map, <laughs> which is sort of simple. Uh, and then we're going to fill it with data. So how do you do that? Uh, well, you use square brackets, sort of like you're accessing an index of an array, uh, but you'll put in a key. So we'll do end, since we've been using that for example, we'll start with that, and we'll set it equal to zero. And we'll add two other things here, two other keys to our map. First one being option one, which just one, and I will copy this just to save myself some time and option 2 will correlate to 2 so now our map is filled with data our map has three keys in it they're all unique and they all have values which they point to so now what I'm going to do is uh, make it initialize an invariable map we'll call this map value and we'll set it equal to negative 1 and then we're going to start at the loop which displays menu so we'll do a while loop and while map value is not equal to zero this map will continue to run and remember map value the value is not equal to zero and the key which would make it zero is end here so it's basically in in other terms um, saying while well, that map key is not end continue to run this continue to display the menu um, and then once it is end it no longer displays the menu which then will end in turn end our program so what we're going to do is we're going to read input from the user so we have to store that input somewhere which we're going to store it in a string um, we'll just call it input again for simplicity and we will do um, get line and then um, do cn and then input. So 
the reason that we're doing get line is because there's a space here in option and if we just did CN it would just grab option it would not grab option one and then we're going to write that to input so now that we have uh, a place to hold our input we have actual gathering uh, the fetching of the input we are now going to check to see whether or not um, um, check if key exists in map and to do this there are a couple ways to do it but I think the the way that I'm about to show you is the most simplest uh, what you're going to do is map dot count oh not that map dot count and then you'll put in input so what this does is it counts the occurrences of a key in a map. And if you remember, maps, the keys in maps are unique. So there can only be one. So I'm going to put greater than zero. So if it's greater than zero, it means that key is found. And if it's not greater than zero, it means that the key is not found. Because uh, if it goes through the count, goes iterates or it looks in the map and it does not find the key then nothing was incremented and it's zero um, you could also put double equals a uh, comparison to one uh, however I'm just gonna I'm just gonna label it zero because either will achieve similar function <clears throat> so when the key is found you will change your map value to uh, the value which the key correlates to. So how would you do that? So map has a nice little function called find. So you would put in your find, um, or excuse me, you would put in your input, which is the key. So now it finds that key in the map. <clears throat> and then you can either access first or second. Now first is the key and second is the value and and as you can see here the first is the key which is the string so that would just give us basically what we inputted in this case if we uh, if we entered were to enter end it would then um, just return end if we put first here but if we put second it would return zero and map value remember is an int so that is good that's what we want that returns so now that changes that map value to whatever the value is of the key which was entered if that uh, if, if that made any bit of sense and then for the else here um, we can just put map value um, <coughs> map value equal to negative one just to just to show um, just return it to its default value here uh, because nothing was found and we can even put some just to have some feedback here um, uh, key is found and again this prints out to the console that the key was found and then key not found uh, just then we have a little bit of input there so now this 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 error checking saves you from having uh, some some nasty errors or or any other problems in your code and then now to probably the moment you've all been waiting for and the whole reason that you probably clicked on this video possibly is the switch statement so we'll put map value in here which is the int the integer which the key correlates to remember in our map <clears throat> and then we will put case zero break now it evaluates this map, map value to see if it equates to zero. And remember, zero correlates to end. So when end is entered, it goes, it gets checked, it is, it is found. It then uh, takes the key, which end, or excuse me, it takes the value, which end correlates to, which is zero, and inserts it into map value and then it processes whatever is in map value. In this case, it just breaks out of the loop. 
And you may be saying to yourself, that doesn't do anything. But remember, our while loop then evaluates it again. And if it is equal to zero, then it breaks out of this while loop and then in turn ends our program. So, uh, end of while loop. So, uh, so yeah, so that is why we're just putting a break there with no other processing, because no other processing is needed. And then for option one, we'll just copy that. Um, and then put in a break. And then we can just type in here um, option one selected. And then we'll copy this just for simplicity. And now similar similar process as case zero here, it, it's evaluating the input and then um, dis will display to the user based on whatever that input is, um, whatever input, whatever key was entered, it'll correlate to the value, which is then used for processing in the switch statement. Um, and now we should be good to go. So we'll compile this, make sure I didn't do anything wrong. We'll run it. Now we, remember, we can either enter, well let's first just enter something random. Key not found, right? So that's what we're looking for because there's no key with ASDF, ASDF as, or there's no key in the map with ASDF, ASDF as the key. And uh, so now let's do option one. Key is found, option one selected. Option two, key is found, option two selected, and finishes the program. So now, uh, I hope you can see the possibilities of what you can do with something like this. Uh, it can make processing a lot easier, having this all in a switch statement, and just having this um, error checking just to see if it exists, and um, it can really, really make it for some, for some nice code. Again, an enum is probably the best way typically to accomplish something like this, but I hope that this just provides you um, just maybe a, a glimpse at another way to do it because maybe maybe uh, enums won't work in your specific case and uh, and a map is the way to go. Uh, so I hope you hope you learned something and uh, I'll catch you in the next one.